I was trying to accomplish a nice jumbled out look with this 10 gallon Neo Caradina tank. But the Java Moss has sort of taken over and it's quite infested with probably, I don't believe it's green hair algae, some sort of fuzzy algae. But I discovered quite by accident that cherry shrimp will survive in the 120 gallon tank. So what I can do is pull out some java moss and perhaps even a piece of driftwood or two and move them to the 120 gallon tank. Hopefully the, uh, the sudden temperature change won't kill any shrimp that go along for the ride. I was surprised previously when I took a de decoration from a tank and plopped it right in that many shrimp survived and are now breeding successfully in that tank. Over here you can see a dwarf Sagittaria is doing fine in this rather shaded area among water wisteria. There are several Anubius Nana attached to driftwood in the tank. If you look very closely you might be able to see an Anubius Nana in the background but there's so much java moss it's almost completely obscured. When I removed the clumps of java moss from the 10 gallon shrimp tank and put them in a bucket I had initially planned to drip acclimate any shrimp that might be hidden in that java moss before putting it into this tank but I thought well the shrimp might be crushed as I tie the java moss to this large piece of Mopani driftwood that I added on the right that's partially obscuring the intake of one hang on the back filter. So what I decided to do was lift the java moss out of the water in the bucket several times and very gently allow hopefully all of the shrimplets to escape into the bucket and then return them to the 10 gallon shrimp tank. No water parameter change for them at all so they should be just fine. And I think that uh, I think adding the piece of Mopani really helps round out this tank. However that large piece had been soaking in a five gallon bucket of water for only about three weeks or so. I'm expecting the water in this tank to turn quite brown from the addition of all that tannin. But that's fine and eventually it'll begin to clear up. Removing the java moss was a lot easier than I thought it would be. I figured the driftwood ornaments would be uprooted with the java moss, but it actually came right off the top of them on both sides of the large decoration in the center. And now the Anubius Nana are much more visible. Over here you can see several plants and they go well with the water wisteria. The only problem is there's quite a bit of blackbeard algae on the large decoration in the center in particular. I have had some success controlling the algae in this tank by lowering the water level and applying hydrogen peroxide to the exposed algae just a little bit so that so as not to endanger the shrimp 
but I believe it's gotten to the point where the best course of action will be to remove the large piece of driftwood from the center and replace it with the largest piece I have on hand and then I can take this large piece and put it in the 120 gallon tank where true Siamese algae eaters can devour the black beard algae. It's late September and as you can see some of these green water cultures are doing better than others. One on the end is not that green but the other three are as green as pea soup now they haven't been this green most of the year and I started them with used aquarium water and compost and it took a long time for them to turn green at all but I wonder if the reason I've got such a nice bloom of phytoplankton at this point is because several weeks ago I refilled these containers with used aquarium water that was very thick and detritus from a gravel vacuum and I believe that is probably one of the reasons that the phytoplankton is doing so well at this point Several of my Daphnia cultures are doing quite well at this time. So I'll do a water change, replace their water with green water, add some yeast, and give my Columbian Tetra a treat. <laughs> 